All right, with this forecast video update on this Wednesday, July the 7th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you all had a wonderful day. I have to say that the uh, the worst impacts from Elsa has moved out of central Florida as of tonight, after a little bit of a rough night, especially west of Orlando last night. But uh, there are still some leftover impacts uh, across parts of central Florida, and that's basically the lingering, the lingering showers and some gusty winds that are still happening. But again, the biggest in impacts are out of our viewing area, and that means that beginning tomorrow and for, for the rest of this week, we'll see our weather pattern return to normal with some uh, late-day showers and thunderstorms and temperatures heating back into the 90s. And I'll explain more about that here in just a little bit later, but let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now on the radar and see what's happening in central Florida on this Wednesday evening. And as you can see, again, there are still some showers, mostly just along and a bit west of I-4, as you can see here. So we'll zoom in down here into parts of Lake and Polk counties where there where there are some uh, tropical downpours happening right now. And as you can see, if we zoom in a little bit closer, also uh, there are tropical there are some tropical downpours right now near Clermont, uh, back right along Highway 27, and also right farther south you go into just to the north of Winter Haven. So we got some tropical downpours happening right now at this hour. And if I play this in motion. It looks like these uh, tropical downpours are moving from the southwest, moving to the north and east. We'll say at about uh, 35 to 40, maybe 45 miles per hour. So if you got any plans this evening, again, just be aware there could be some uh, leftover impacts. Like I said, like I said before, there will be lingering showers and some gusty winds. But other than that, I think the rest of this evening should be looking okay. But the rain will not last much longer, so just try to remember that too. So let's go ahead and do some tracking with these uh, tropical showers, shall we? And uh, let's, go, let's go ahead and put one right here that is located near Clermont. Again, it's moving to the north and east at about uh, 40 to 45 miles per hour. And if I fix the track here of the, the storm, that will, that will give uh, sky top at about 809. Ferndale at 813, and the same thing for the Montford area. So, so if you live in these locations in the northeastern side, or eastern Lake County, excuse me, but northeast of Claremont, uh, just be aware that you could see some tropical downpours that can move into y'all's direction uh, in the next uh, 15 minutes or so. And let's go ahead and put one right here that is located in the southwestern uh, side of Lake County, because again, there's tropical downpours too. Again, moving to the same direction, moving to the north and east at 45 miles per hour. And that will give uh, Groveland at about 818 and Clearmont at 821. So if you live in the Clearmont area, just be aware that you can see another batch of tropical downpours. Uh, they'll, move, they'll move in from the southwestern part of the county as we head into the next uh, 15 minutes too. But let's go ahead and pan on south a little bit again, because again, it's not just Lake County that are seeing tropical downpours, but also we got a little bit of a little bit right there in the uh, northern sections of Polk County. So if I turn on the lightning here, see if we've seen any lightning strikes with this uh, little guy. And there it is. Yeah, so, so it looks like this little heavier shower that is in, in the northern side of Polk County is producing just a little bit of rubble of thunder and a few lightning strikes, but it's nothing severe, which is a good thing. And again, it should not last, uh, uh, it should not last for much longer, so just keep that in mind as always. And as I turn off the uh, lightning, uh, let's go ahead and put another track on that uh, cell as well. Again, moving to the same direction, uh, north and east at 40 to 45 miles per hour. Yeah, let's put this a little bit farther so I could get some a more list of cities that could be in the path of this uh, tropical downpour. And it looks like uh, Harlem Heights is the only community over in the western side of Orange County that is on the list. So if you live in Harlem Heights, it looks like you could be impacted by those uh, heavier tropical downpours at A21 and potentially over near Disney as well. So if you're if you're anywhere near Disney, uh, just be aware that you can see some more heavier showers that could move in here in just a little bit later. But again, it should not last any much longer. So just please note that if you got plans this evening. But also take a poncho with you. Plus, we got some uh, showers as well if we go farther to the north, uh, up towards uh, Seminole County, like around Sanford, and some right here in the northeastern side of Lake County, so like Paisley, you're getting some of that uh, shower activity 
at the moment. And also there's some showers in the central part of Volusia County. So between Deltona and Daytona Beach, we got a little bit of a little bit of some showers there too. And also for Ormond Beach. And plus there's also some more showers over in the eastern side of Marion County. And there's a little bit of a quick shower that is beginning to pop up in the central side of Sumter County. But again, it will be it will be moving pretty quick. So again, it will not be lasting all evening long. And, and again, these are and again these are the leftover impacts from uh, Tropical Storm Elsa that we're seeing at the moment. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how strong the winds are with with these, uh, or not with the thunderstorms, but what's happening as far as the impacts of Elsa goes, the leftover impacts that is. And uh, as of right now, it looks like the winds are starting to go down, which is a good thing. But there's some localized places where the winds are still a little bit gusty. So like, for example, over here in the southern uh, part of Orange County between Kissimmee and right near the Orlando International Airport. Right now, the winds are picking up at about 11 miles per hour. But you notice these little bit of some orange and greens, greens here near the coast of Cape Canaveral and also near the coast of Titusville. That means the winds are Look at this here, estimating stronger at 32 miles per hour. That's, that's some pretty strong uh, gusty winds that's that's uh, happening right now along the coast of, again, of Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach. Also, we're seeing winds near Lakeland and perhaps in the northeastern side of Hillsborough County uh, at about 15 miles per hour. Right over here to the northeast of Claremont, winds are also picking up at about 15 miles per, miles per hour as well. And the same story for folks in Lake George. So again, these are localized uh, wind gusts, but again, other places in white are seeing winds uh, lighter. So not, as, so not as really as gusty like it was last night and perhaps earlier this morning when we saw some greater impacts from, from Elsa. So there you have it there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Futurecast and show you uh, the timing of the rain that I expect that is expect, expecting again here for tomorrow and Friday. And again, it's, it's going to be a normal weather pattern day uh, for Thursday and Friday. So just remember that. But I'm still going to show you the timing of who could see some late day storms uh, for the next few days. And before we move on again, folks, if you just uh, pop on into Facebook Live on this Wednesday evening, I don't mind if you could uh, go ahead and share this feed to your Facebook followers because you know my motto, sharing is caring. And before we also move on, I'm going to go ahead and share this feed to one of my other uh, live Facebook pages. So, as always, hang on just a minute, and we will move on. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Futurecast. So any, so any showers that do continue this evening as part of the leftover impacts from Tropical Storm Elsa, it will be that way for the next few hours until things uh, do quiet down by overnight tonight. But notice on Futurecast, though, if you go towards Marion County, like Ocala, you can see maybe some leftover showers uh, during the overnight. But other than that, it looks like most of us will stay mostly dry. So at least it'll be better than what we saw last night. And then as, as we wake up uh, tomorrow morning at 7 or 8, as you head out the door, it looks like we'll be seeing a dry start. But notice farther west you go towards the I-75 corridor. Could be some, there could be some possible tropical downpours that may develop to start off the day, but not for here in central Florida. But as we head into later, the later part of the day, 
So about one or two o'clock, it looks like we'll see some of these uh, late day showers and storms uh, going uh, get going, especially uh, focus, focusing just in the north and west of Orlando. So from near Ocala to, let's say, Bosnell, Wildwood, the villages, perhaps near Mount Dora, and even towards Lake George. There could be some uh, pretty decent showers and storms that could form here by 2 p.m. in the afternoon tomorrow. And then as we head into 5 and 6, uh, some of these storms may start to weaken into some light showers as we approach the 5 o'clock hour. Uh, right now, according to future cast, it shows the light showers will move into Volusia County, which includes Daytona, also up towards uh, Palm Coast. And there could be maybe some heavier showers that may develop over towards the northeastern side of Orange and the eastern sections of Seminole counties. But it's not going to last uh, that long, I don't think. And then heading into about 6 and 7, still a couple of showers could be left over here in parts of the Orlando metro. But again, it's not going to be raining all evening, so don't cancel any plans if you have some. And then it uh, looks like still the rain could continue. Again, it's just a quick moving shower or thunderstorm that may continue, not just for the early evening, but into mid-evening here in Orlando and perhaps into the Kissimmee areas. And then that will pretty much taper off as we head towards uh, late tomorrow night and into Friday. So beginning Friday morning, as you head, as you head out the door, looks like we'll be looking uh, pretty good. So, so pretty good start to the day there. And then as we head towards Friday afternoon, again, we'll see these late day showers and storms get going, especially between 3 and 4. So we'll call for about a, another 50% coverage of late afternoon and evening showers and sea breeze thunderstorms. So if you got plans on Friday, again, don't cancel them because it's not going to be raining all day long, but just have a poncho uh, ready with you in case if it starts to rain uh, while you're, you know, enjoying your outdoors. And then heading into about 5 and 6, still the rain continues uh, mostly along I-4 from Seminole into Osceola counties. And then up about pretty much uh, at least dissipate as far as the storms go, but still the rain, the, reling the lingering rain will continue by mid-evening. Again, right along I-4 in east, but the storms will start to, uh, start to die down. And as we head into about uh, 10, 11, midnight, it looks like the rain that's, that's left will pretty much weaken. So there you uh, pretty much have it there. So let's take a look and see how much rain you folks could see with these uh, storms here for the next uh, couple of days. As we take a look at, take a look at that part on Futurecast... And this run carries all the way through early Saturday morning. And uh, it looks like the biggest totals will be, will be mostly right along I-4 from, let's say, between Kissimmee and Daytona, where, where we see these oranges and reds here. It does indicate that you folks could pick up maybe between 2 to 4 inches of rain, maybe some localized spots, maybe a little higher than that uh, for the next uh, 48 hours with these uh, late afternoon storms. And the same story for you folks up in Flagler County, too, like Palm Coast, Flagler Beach. You folks could also pick up between three to five inches of accumulating rainfall, too. And the same story for folks in western Marion County. So that's why that weather pattern is, is returning to normal for this time of year as we head into Thursday and Friday. And, of course, temperatures will also be heating things up into the 90s as well. All right, so as far as Elsa goes, I'm going to show you where it's, where it's exactly at at the moment because, again, most of the most of the worst impacts have moved north to near Jacksonville and near Savannah, Georgia. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look on where. Let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and turn on the track of the storm and see where that's at at the moment. And right now, as you can see, according to what you're seeing here on Barron, the latest track of the storm is located uh, right in the south central sections of Georgia. So according to this new eight o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Hurricane Center, the winds continues to weaken down to about 45 miles per hour as moves due to the north and northeast at 15. So it looks like it should be still, you know, moving up towards South Carolina here at least by overnight tonight and, and also towards North Carolina by around tomorrow afternoon when, where it may start to weaken into a tropical depression. Of course, already in Virginia and North Carolina, flood watches have been issued ahead of the storm. But right now, where, it, where it's at... As you can see across most of South, South and East Georgia, including Savannah and Charleston, there are, and even Jacksonville too, there are still tropical storm warnings in effect right now. And even in the yellow box from South Carolina into Georgia, that is a tornado watch that is also out too. 
And by the way, we've been hearing over in Jacksonville earlier this evening that, that there has been uh, some possible tornado damage related to Elsa. Uh, but uh, uh, but I'm just hoping, you know, everybody's uh, all, all right without getting hurt. But there's been, been reports of damage. But uh, don't know the exact rating of the tornado. So if at the, server, the weather service in Jacksonville will set the survey team tomorrow and survey the damage. But... Uh, but as we pan up to the north just a little bit, it looks like uh, Elsa will still continue to be around the U.S. as we head towards at least by the end of this week. And it looks like it may strengthen back into a tropical storm by uh, early Friday morning once it makes landfall uh, just near D.C. into Delaware, or perhaps the New Jersey coast. And even New York as well could be in the path of Elsa as well and also parts of Connecticut. Boston could be in the path of that too. So it looks like uh, Friday could be the day where the northeast could uh, see some impacts of Elsa before it moves all the way up towards Canada by the weekend. So yeah, it's been around since late last week, but at least the main part of it is uh, out of central Florida, so that's a good thing. But the tropics across the rest of the rest of the Atlantic this evening, as of now, it looks to be quiet, which is a good which is a good thing too. But remember, it's hurricane season, and it's going to be around through November 30th, so you still need to be prepared for any future storms that will develop uh, as we get into at least late this summer to early fall, which is the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. So, so that's the update there. So let's get back uh, to Central Florida. And before we get into the GFS, if you're just uh, popping in and if you maybe missed the radar just a little while ago, here it is again. And like I said before, we're seeing some leftover impacts from Elsa right now with, with, with just some showers and a couple of tropical downpours. But uh, again, this should be moving pretty quickly. Uh, so it's not going to rain all evening. And of course, we should be done by, for the night tonight. And, and, by, and by the way, these showers are moving from the southwest to the north and east pretty quick too. So, so there you have it there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the weekend forecast, beginning with uh, Saturday, which is uh, July 10th. And if you got some big plans on Saturday, again, don't cancel them because it's not going to last all day long, but we'll still see some late afternoon, late afternoon and early evening showers and thunderstorms that will develop across most of central Florida. And some could be heavy at times, too. According to the GFS, it shows anywhere from Orange to, let's say, Seminole, Volusia, and Osceola counties, where rain totals can range, be range between 2 to 4 inches uh, possible. So, locally, heavy rain could be the main concern uh, as these uh, storms do, do get going by Saturday, Saturday afternoon. But again, it's going to be just a hit or miss type activity. But be sure you have a, pon your po a poncho with you if you're going to be outside on the, during the day on Saturday. And temperatures again will get back to we'll get back to normal as well for this time of year as we uh, crank up the heat. So we're, so we're see temp so we're going to see temperatures rise into the upper 80s and low 90s all across Central Florida as we head into again the day on Saturday. And it looks like the same thing will also happen in the Mississippi Valley where temperatures again could heat up into the 80s and 90s. But with these storms that will happen, that could slightly help temperatures cool down. And let's go ahead and see what's uh, going to be happening for Sunday. So if we got some big plans on Sunday, it looks like that our rain chances will start to uh, wind down to about a 30%, we'll call. So we'll call for about a 30% coverage of some isolated spotty uh, afternoon showers and storms. But other than that, it looks like it'll be mostly to partly sunny as we head towards that day. Right now, the better chance of rain will be down towards South Florida. Will there be, will there be about a 50% coverage of some afternoon and evening showers and storms and the same thing? For portions of the panhandle and our high temperature wise down below that again it looks to remain the same as we remain hot and humid with 80s and 90s all across the entire peninsula peninsula and also the same story for folks in the mississippi valley and as we get into early next week next week excuse me such as uh, monday july 12th and as you can see, according to the GFS, it looks like the rain chances will start to uh, increase again. This time, the focus looks to be just west of I-4, so anywhere from Sumter to Marion, Lake, and Volusia counties, there could be just about a 40 to even a 50% coverage of late-day showers and storms. Others may see lower coverage, like here in Orlando. 
But farther north and west you go across Mississippi and Alabama, look at that. Talk about maybe some pretty de decent amounts of rain across uh, the region as we head into Monday. And that could be ahead of a cold front if that is the case. But of course, it will not be approaching Florida because, you know, we don't see that coming through during the summer months. And besides the rain we'll see on Monday, temperatures here in central Florida looks to stay the same, again, with highs in the 90s. But again, with the rain that will continue in Alabama and Mississippi, again, there will be a cold front and that could really cool the temperatures down into the 70s and 80s once it moves in on that day too. And the rain continues yet again for the day for the day on Tuesday, July 3rd. And right now the better chances of rain will be mostly again just to the north of Orlando. So anywhere from near Ocala to Palm Coast. Uh, Bushnell, Wildwood uh, we'll give it a, we'll give our coverage of rain that day about a 50%, but others will see just a 30% coverage of some isolated storms as we head into the day on Tuesday, because again, it's just a regular normal summer pattern that we'll be seeing here starting tomorrow and for the next uh, several days. And our high temperature wise, again, still looks to stay pretty hot and muggy with mostly in the way of low to mid 90s. And that will still continue besides with the storms on Tuesday and the same thing also across southern sections of Georgia and South Carolina. But with the bigger chances of rain that will continue to happen across Alabama and Mississippi, that will keep the temperatures again a little bit cooler in the 80s and perhaps into the upper 70s as well. All right, now heading into a week from today, next Wednesday, July 14th, and still the rain chances will remain High, this time still focusing north and west of Orlando with just about a 50 to a 60% coverage of late afternoon and early evening showers and thunderstorms. And not just for here in parts of Florida, but also across parts of Alabama and Georgia. And our high temperatures for that day, once again, looks to stay mainly the same with 80s and 90s all across the entire viewing area and also points north in the Mississippi Valley. Now, here is late next week. This is a week from tomorrow, Thursday, July 15th, and it looks like the rain chances will start to go down to about a 30% coverage. So the higher chances will push off towards the west and to the Gulf Coast section of our state. But this time, chances will be lower, especially right along and east of I-4. So we're going to give it about a 30% chance for a few isolated uh, spotty areas of showers and thunder showers. Otherwise, it will be, part be partly to mostly sunny. And our high temperatures, again, looks to stay, again, more like summer with highs in the 80s and 90s to continue. And also farther north you go into the Mississippi Valley. So. All right. Now, here is next Friday, July 16th. And it looks like the rain chances, again, will stay minimal at about a 30 percent for some spots. Otherwise, they'll still be part, partly to mostly sunny. And the scattered rain chances will stay, again, mostly to the north of Alabama and Mississippi, if that is right. Temperatures, again, looks to stay, again, in the 80s and 90s all across the entire viewing area. And also for folks up in the Mississippi Valley. And here is next weekend. Saturday, July 17th, and still the rain chances remain minimal at 20 to 30 percent. So just a little bit of a spotty shower and thunder shower activity to remain to remain in our viewing area. But again, it's not going to last all day long. Otherwise, it'd be partly to mostly sunny. And still the heat remains in the forecast for next weekend with 80s and 90s again to stick around, stick around. And also for folks up in the Mississippi Valley. All right, as we enter the land of voodoo country, this is taking you to Sunday, July 18th, and the rain chances will start to go up again to about a 50 to maybe even a 60% coverage of some late afternoon and early evening showers and thunderstorms. So, yep, we'll see the rain chances go up again by that day. And our high temperature-wise down below that still looks to stay the same as the heat remains in central Florida with highs in the mid-90s and also up in the Mississippi Valley. 
So yeah, this will just be a normal summer-like day here in the southeast as we head into the next uh, several days. Now here is Monday, July 19th, and looks like the rain chances will start to wind down again. So it we'll, so looks like the rain chances will, will stay mostly scattered in nature if you go north of Orlando. So like go for towards Marion County and points up to the north and across Georgia, there'll be about a 50% chance for some late day thunderstorms on that day, but others should be looking pretty dry with mostly sunny skies, including right here in most of central Florida. But again, it's just the heat that will be a concern as well, with temperatures remaining in the 90s all across the viewing area and also points north in the Mississippi Valley. And here is two weeks from yesterday. That's Tuesday, July 20th. And again, the rain chances still looks to be low. So we're talking about maybe a 20 to even a 30% coverage of a few spotty isolated showers possible. But otherwise, it'll be mostly sunny. But the scattered rain chances staying up north across the Mississippi Valley. Temperature-wise uh, for that day, again, still looks to stay pretty hot with highs in the mid-90s across the viewing area. And look at, look at Mississippi and Alabama and perhaps South Georgia. Looks like the brutally heat wave may be brewing up across the the area for the day on the 20th with highs ranging to the mid to perhaps even upper 90s. So yeah, this is why summer's not it's not over yet. Now here is two weeks from today. That's Wednesday, July, uh, July 21st, and the rain chances will increase a bit again, but this time in about an average chance we'll be watching, so we're going to call for about a 30 to a 40 percent coverage of some late afternoon and early evening showers and storms as the summertime pattern continues. Right now, the higher chances will stay north across Georgia and the eastern side of Alabama. But again, it's just too early to tell because it's land of voodoo, so that could likely change. And uh, temperatures that day, again, looks to stay the same as we remain pretty hot and humid with highs in the mid-90s especially all across the peninsula and also back into, into the western sections of Alabama and Mississippi. Now here is two weeks from tomorrow, Thursday, July 22nd, and the rain chances again, it will start to kick back up uh, once again. So we're talking about, we're talking about uh, rain chances going back to about a 50% uh, coverage here in central Florida especially uh, focusing along I-4 and west, and also farther north you go into Georgia and Alabama. Temperature-wise, uh, otherwise looks to stay the same, with, again, mainly in the mid to upper 90s, not just for here in Florida, but also across the southeastern side of Georgia and eastern South Carolina, but where there'll be a very, very high chance of showers and storms, especially in South Alabama, that could really help temperatures cool down a bit into the 70s and 80s, which that could be a big relief. Well, not big, but a bit of a relief, I should say, from the biggest heat wave. But again, it's just too early to tell, so that's why changes, changes could be made to the models as we hit closer to late July. And last but not least is Friday, July 23rd, and the rain chances will stay high to about a 50% coverage here in central Florida. Again, time frame is from late afternoon, late afternoon and early evening. And temperatures, again, looks to stay mostly the same with 80s and 90s. All right, gang, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping up this uh, Facebook live feed on this Wednesday evening. So I'll be back again for another live update tomorrow night, same time between 8 and 8.30. And as usual, I'll, co I'll continue to post more notes or updates on my blog and social media pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you all enjoy your evening. Please remember to uh, take care of yourselves and each other, and God bless.